Okay, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Good, good, good morning. Yeah, morning. Yeah, good. I think last lecture I own you a video, right? So I'm trying to see if this time I can make it happen. Let me try. Where is my, okay, I think it's here. Uh, here. Okay, I tested before I, uh, you know, I joined the Zoom meeting. I hope uh, it can work. But uh, this video, just as I mentioned last uh, lecture, um, people are using the internet and uh, a lot of mobiles to um, improve the some models, right? Some language processing models, some uh, uh, intelligent model. But uh, the internet is a very important. Uh, uh, media to to do that right so let me just quickly uh, play this video hopefully it can work machine learning on Google Cloud is a secure way for making products smarter over time the power of mobile devices has allowed us to improve privacy by running machine learning directly on your phone so your phone will quickly feel even more personal and it's better for your data plan and battery life. Federated learning is a new technology that enables your phone to learn from other devices while keeping your data private and secure. Here's how it works. First, your phone downloads a generic machine learning model. After your phone personalizes and improves its model, it computes a summary about the changes. Thousands of summaries are anonymously combined when phones are plugged in at night. This provides a global improvement to the model that makes it work better for everybody. So you get a smarter phone, and your data stays in your hands. This is just a, a, a very short video. Everyone can see that, right? And they can hear the sound? Yes. OK, good, good. So that means yeah. the next time, uh, yeah, that works. Okay, so uh, my point here is that uh, as you see in the video, uh, everyone can download the model, right? Or download the smart thing to your phone, but your phone provides a special data, right? According to your personalized uh, thing, right? Um, whatever you want to uh, use our form, they will provide some personalized data. And then the model could be improved and uh, uh, millions, of the uh, improved model could be sent back to the Google, to the data center, and uh, they can, uh, based on your personal data, to improve their aggregated model, right? But the problem also here is some security thing, privacy thing. So you can see internet privacy and uh, security is very important because you want to share your uh, improved model, but you don't want to share your privacy data, right? So you don't want to let people know where you have been every day or some, privacy information. So uh, the internet, I think, is a um, uh, good thing. I have good thing or bad thing, right? Good thing, you share everything. You can improve uh, uh, day, uh, everyday life, but you have to protect your uh, privacy and uh, uh, security. So privacy security research is now they become more and more important. Um, I know many university or college has a uh, um, have the uh, uh, security or cybersecurity some degree, right, or program. So um, it's highly related to the, the development of the internet, right? So um, this is uh, the video I own you last lecture, and uh, uh, hopefully you you know uh, you are interested in this area. If you want to do some mm, a master degree or PhD degree, this could be a very interesting topic or direction, okay, in the future, or even for your for your for your work, right? For a job, a career. Okay, so uh, let's go back to uh, our course material. Uh, last uh, lecture, I think we ended in um, how the home network and uh, uh, how home, right? How your home can access to the internet. What is the, uh, um, 
overall structure or shape of your home networks, right? Still remember, um, this is your uh, high level uh, a picture of your home, right? You have a, a cell phone, you have laptop, you have a refrigerator. Um, then um, the from the central office, right? Um, teleconference, uh, uh, te telecommunication uh, uh, office or some cable office, right? So they will connect your home to their office. And then first they will go to the cable or DSL modem. I still remember DSL, right? DSL um, modem and then router and then to your Wi-Fi. But usually this thing can be combined together, right? In a single box and uh, send through the Wi-Fi or wire uh, ethernet. Okay, uh, the the wire wire thing to your to your desktop or, or laptop, right? Even laptop. So this is uh, how your home network look like, and we also introduce the wireless um, network, right? So for uh, many places, you don't want to use the wire to connect your device or equipment to the internet, right? So you have to use the wireless thing, and there are two wireless thing, right? So as I mentioned. Um, Every uh, home or family, they have a, a Wi-Fi, right? So this is a very commonly used um, uh, uh, protocol, right? And uh, uh, everyone have a phone, so they will have a cellular uh, uh, network. So today we are using 4G network, and the future we use 5G and uh, maybe 6G, right? So as I mentioned, 4G, um, the, the, the range would be usually 10 miles, right? But the transmission rate is about 10 megabits per second, okay? Uh, but for the future 5G, the transmission rate uh, would be uh, much higher than this um, 4G thing. So usually it can have uh, up to 300 megabits per second, okay? but the range would be also significant uh, uh, reduced. Uh, so now, for example, 4G has um, uh, 10 miles, as I mentioned, but for future 5G, it's only about hundreds of meters, right? Some one, for example, 1,000 feet or 500 meters. So that means you have to establish a lot of 5G station to make sure your um, data or your signal can cover, cover your phone, right? So that's some challenges in here. Yeah. Excuse me, your um, presentation isn't full screened anymore. We can see your notes. Oh, okay. So thanks for reminding. I think there is something wrong with the share slide, but let me reshare, re okay? Sounds good. Okay, let me reshare. Is now better or still the same thing? It's good. Okay, good, yeah. So I don't know why, but uh, usually I have to start the uh, PPT first and then I share. But if I first share and then start uh, PPT um, slides, then it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not a full screen thing, okay? So just feel free to remind me, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, here is a uh, uh, 5G and 4G. Okay, while uh, uh, it's a uh, yeah, it's still wireless, right? But uh, it's not Wi-Fi, right? It's a cellular access network. Okay, so um, but I think I believe this is my belief. Um, 5G will be coming, and the 6G also will be coming, and uh, because we have such powerful uh, wireless network, we can enable a lot of things. Right. So previously, uh, you cannot uh, do some um, um, online thing. For example, um, uh, he, there is a very interesting uh, research topic uh, still undergoing. For example, if a car and a car connect to each other, right? But uh, how you can guarantee? For example, um, if uh, you for in the highway or in the way, right? So car need to be 100% uh, safe, right? If previously you have uh, just a 3G or 4G, uh, sometimes if you need to send some information to other car 
to do a warning or a send and receive data, um, the speed or the delay would be not uh, tolerable, right? But now if you have 5G or 6G, right, the car and the car can exchange the data, right? And uh, if there is some bad thing happening and the other car could uh, be known immediately, right? So, I mean, um, high speed data transmission can enable a lot of things you cannot imagine in the before, uh, before right? But now I think uh, we can do that. Um, so I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of countries uh, competing in 5G and 6G um, in this competition, right? They want to establish the station as many as possible because if they own the infrastructure, uh, I believe they own the future. So um, this is some, something very, um, very important to me, right? Uh, to, I think to everyone, right? So if you um, um, consider about 5G, 6G in the future, they will totally change your life. Okay, so this is some wider thing here. And uh, so um, uh, for the enterprise network, right? Last uh, lecture we end here. So for enterprise network, um, this is also important, right? Even if you don't own a company, uh, but uh, you are working in a company, you are working in a university, right? So it's uh, important to understand how a university or a company or organization, they connect the, the network, okay? So for the enterprise uh, network, it is a mix of a wire and the wireless uh, link technologies, okay? They're connecting a lot of uh, mix switches and rotors, okay? We will cover it later, but uh, generally speaking from this figure, you can see that uh, uh, there is a wire, there is a, uh, wireless and there is a Ethernet and a switch router, uh, many things mixed together. Okay, so maybe this is a too general. I would like to share you um, uh, how I should call this is a, a network plan or network uh, uh, high level hierarchy, right? So uh, previously I was working in University of Alabama and uh, uh, at that time, uh, we were building a high performance computing center uh, and uh, provide a service to the students, faculty, and the other college, right? Because uh, the University of Alabama is a, a, a state university and they can provide service to other uh, college as well, right? So if you look into this, uh, look at this figure, so maybe I should change to a laser point. Okay, you can see my curse, right? Mouse, right? <laughs> So um, if you look at this figure, okay, so here's uh, something we, uh, we were trying to build. This is a uh, computing center, right? Every student and every faculty can access to that machine to do their um, hypervisor computing uh, execution, running, or um, simulate something, right? So if you have some idea, you, maybe the code is too large, right, to run in your uh, a, a desktop or a laptop, you have to find a, a server, right? Or the uh, center to help you to run the large code, right? I think uh, uh, WSU also has a, a HPC uh, center, right? So maybe some of you have already got access to that machine, okay? So the HPC center or the cluster is a centralized thing, right? Managed by the uh, uh, staff and the uh, uh, other administrative person, uh, people, right? And uh, how we connect this HPC to the whole enterprise network in the university. So first you can see that if you are sitting in a lab or research lab or your office for faculty, right? Or for you in a research lab, or in your uh, undergraduate student lab, right? So they will connect usually you the ethernet to the campus network. Okay, so each lab could uh, be connected to the uh, uh, campus network. Okay, so the campus network would uh, be connected to the other component. So for example, here you can see, um, if you want to access the HPC cluster, you first need to collect to the logging node. Okay, so the, what is a logging node? If you want to 
uh, go to the cluster, you first need to log into something, right? And that login node can help you to manage your job and to do your compilation and uh, submit your job, right? That's a login thing and uh, uh, to manage your, 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 your own directory or whatever. So between your lab and the login node, there is some uh, uh, connect, right? Or network or links. Right. So you can see here, uh, we have some research DMZ, right? And uh, from the research DMZ, we connect to the login node. So what is a research DMZ? So here's a quick uh, uh, um, description. So research DMZ is a network used to connect the host and provide the interface to an untrusted external network, okay, while keeping the internal uh, network separately and isolated from the external network. So you can think about this thing as uh, they separate the internal network because the HPC center is an internal network, right? And your uh, research lab network is an outside network, right? Because for security purpose, they want to separate uh, these two things. So they use a research DMZ network to separate these two things. But through the research DMZ, they connect uh, your lab's network to the login node, and then you can access to the HPC center, okay? And uh, here, you also want to access to the internet, right? These are all the enterprise network, but you have to make sure your every machine or even the HPC cluster can access to the internet. So from the research DMZ, they also connect to the internet, okay? So you can think about internet is also a uh, external network. Right, many people can through the internet to attack your your HPC center. Right, you have to protect your users' data, uh, privacy. Right, a program running. Right, so uh, research DMZ is a very important part here. Right, but it's also a, a network. It has a firewall. A lot of things here. Okay, and then you can think about uh, there is a data storage. Data storage connected to the HPC. Uh, cluster. Right, people can also directly access to the data storage from your um, research lab, okay? So you can see uh, many components are connected to each other through the 10 gigabits uh, ethernet, as we mentioned, right? So this is a wire thing. And if here, for example, if you are using the laptop, maybe you can use a wireless uh, network to connect to the uh, login node, right? So here are some uh, high level uh, uh, network uh, structure of the, um, uh, university uh, 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 networking, right? Connect the uh, um, research lab and the HPC center, right? So I hope this will give you more information about how, uh, uh, for example, university will organize their uh, network. So any question about uh, here? So because uh, this figure looks a little bit uh, complicated, I want to uh, everyone to 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 know something about the enterprise network, right? Because you are living in a university, and in the future you will work in a company, and uh, how they will organize their computing infrastructure, and with your office, and the other equipment. Yeah. Uh, there are some questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Thanks for reminding. Uh, let me see. Oh, oops, a lot of questions. Okay. Uh, I think someone is, uh, this HPC looks like it's just a cluster of nodes for parallel computing. Is this correct? Yes, this is correct. Uh, there are a lot of nodes in the HPC cluster. Okay, and usually you will log into the login node and submit your job running in the uh, other nodes for parallel computing. And I think one student, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Ace, you mentioned the Slurm, right? Yes, it's a uh, correct. Uh, now we use a Slurm to manage the parallel job running, right? You only need to submit your job and the job will be queued in Slurm scheduler, okay? Everyone uh, can run the uh, their code in the uh, uh, in, in different nodes, right? But how to uh, schedule those jobs? So Slurm will help you to do that, right? So this is some 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 HPC thing, yeah. Okay, can any other question? Hard to say whether Starlink will pay out to be a better question. Okay, improve over time. Okay. 
Yeah, for me, real 5G is kind of joking state. Yeah, I, I kind of I uh, kind of agree. Yeah, five G is still developing slowly. Uh, I don't want to say when we can expect the fully deployed five G, but uh, um, yeah, we are expecting five G, right? And different uh, different different country, different uh, regions or area use different uh, definitions for five G. Sometimes, for example, we are using four G, but it's not a uh, uh, real four G, right? There is a standard definition four G, but the, the internet provider just uh, limit the speed, right? Because they want to provide more service to people, right? To, uh, I mean, not more service, but service to more people, right? So they just link the uh, limit the four G speed or transmission rate, whatever. But this is some trick played by the company, right? But in the research or or the industry, they should have some agreement. This is my belief, yeah. Okay, so I think uh, this is uh, all the question, right? Okay, so let's continue. Um, so thanks for reminding. So sometimes I... I uh, Did you get the directional question? Okay. Well, Are any of those connections directional? Like, are uh, they all, all bi-directional? Uh, that's a good question. But for the Ethernet, uh, usually everything would be by bi-directional. But for the wireless, we will mention that um, it's a half, um, I mean, I, 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 here I want to define the bi-directional. So if you mean send and receive data as a simultaneous at the same time, definitely wireless would not be the the thing, but for the Ethernet and for the infinity band, definitely they are the bi-directional, right? So it's because they want to have a high speed, so why we will have the bi-directional connection, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Um, so here is some uh, uh, concepts, right? Uh, uh, about the, when you, how you send the data, okay? How you send and how you receive the data. Okay, so when the host want to send the data, usually it will uh, chunk the uh, message from the application to small chunks, right? Or divide the data or message into smaller chunks. Okay, we call it uh, packets. And the packet usually will be with the L bits, right? It depends on the protocol. So generally speaking, if it's uh, L bits and uh, um, the network, Right, when transmit the packet, uh, each link will have the different transmission rate as we mentioned before, right? So the wire wireless have uh, different uh, link at different transmission rate. So if we assume the transmission rate here is R, right? So the transmission rate, we usually call it uh, link capacity or link uh, bandwidth, right? So here are some concepts uh, uh, we will repeatedly emphasize or use that uh, bandwidth, latency, uh, delay, uh, loss, some, some, uh, some concepts. These are, the, as I mentioned in last lecture, these are the, the key concepts, right? You, you need to, to remember very clearly and uh, uh, in your homework, in assignment tests, you have to, to, to react immediately. What is the uh, bandwidth, right? So, so here, the bandwidth uh, is also the link capacity. It's a link transmission rate. When you send a packet to the other uh, uh, end, right, or the receiver, right, so the packet, uh, the link will have the transmission rate, and we call it uh, link bandwidth, okay? And uh, usually how we can calculate the packet transmission delay. I think this is a simple uh, uh, um, uh, calculation, right? Because you have L bits and uh, the link, uh, bandwidth or transmission rate is uh, R bits per second, right? So you just use L bits divided by R bits per second. You can calculate the second, right? How many seconds if you want to transmit this uh, packet through this uh, link, okay? So it would be L divided by R. Uh, we call it a transmission delay, okay? So here are two concepts. Is, uh, one is a uh, link bandwidth, right? Different. Uh, uh, device different link have different uh, transmission rate, and this is a transmission delay because you have the uh, uh, L bits to transmit. Okay, so here's a um, uh, uh, concept. Here are some uh, two concepts, 
and uh, when you send out the the message or the packets, the packets need to propagate in some physical medium, right? So it's uh, not difficult to understand the uh, uh, I mean, this things to the uh, wire or wireless. If you use a wireless, right, we will we will we will we will show that later. But it's a radio, right? So it's a spectrum. But if you propagate the message or packet through the wire thing, it would be from the Ethernet or from the um, different infinity band, right? So different uh, uh, media. So here, so the medium uh, physical. Uh, medium, uh, so that's uh, the thing that propagate between the, the transmitter and the receiver, okay? So, um, usually we will have the guided medium and the unguided medium. As I mentioned, uh, the signal will propagate in solid medium, copper, fiber, cox, right? And the unguided medium, for example, signal, radio, and uh, uh, wireless things, right? So we will talk about guided medium and unguided medium in the next uh, slides. So for wireless, uh, so for guided medium, so here are two, uh, two uh, uh, examples, not two examples, just one example, but with different categories, uh, with different speed. Um, so two insulated copper wires, they are just uh, twisted together, okay? And uh, they have the different uh, level of the, uh, the, the, the wires. For example, the category five Ethernet, they only have a one up to one gigabit per second. But for category six, it will have a um, ten gigabits per second Ethernet. So as we mentioned in the previous slide, so you can see here, usually nowadays for the uh, uh, I mean campers or company uh, wise uh, Ethernet, they will use a ten gigabit uh, Ethernet. Okay, that means they are the category six. Okay, they provide a, a high bandwidth. Okay, but for example, if you are using uh, only connect your laptop or desktop to your uh, router or modem, you don't need to use a 10 gigabit uh, uh, Ethernet, right? That's a, a waste, right? You just need a one gigabit, that should be fine because it depends on the um, transmission rate. Okay, but for the university or campus wise, definitely you want to have a high bandwidth ethernet, right? So here are the uh, different cables. And the uh, first is a cop, I think it's a copper cable, right? So it's a bi-directional and it has a higher, um, uh, it has a broader band. So as we mentioned before, right? Different uh, frequency signal could be uh, propagated in the same cable. Right, so uh, we mentioned uh, that, and this is something we we we, we use for that. Uh, it's a um, copper-based uh, cable, right? Multi-frequency channels could be on the same cable, right? And uh, when the modem receives the data, they will just uh, decode the data, right, to the different uh, channels, and uh, some for the TV, some for your internet, right? So the speed per channel usually is 100 megabits per second, okay? This is a cable thing. I think most of the family or most of you are using the cable, but also some of you may heard that um, we have the fiber optical cable, right? That's a very high speed and expensive cable, right? So um, it's the, uh, it is, consists of a glass fiber, right? And it's carrying uh, light pulses, right? Each pulse is uh, represent for one bit, right? It has a very high speed uh, because it's a, uh, um, the speed is uh, just as a light speed, usually, generally speaking, right? And uh, um, the point-to-point -point transmission rate will be about 10 to 100 gigabit per second. It's a very high speed uh, uh, link uh, or physical medium, but it's also very expensive, right? And it's very hard to repair because you can see a lot of uh, um, uh, light, uh, uh, pulses in the uh, cable, right? If uh, one uh, uh, puzzles, uh, sorry, puzzles will be uh, not working, you have to fix that uh, and uh, uh, repair that one by one, right? So just examine that it will be very expensive. Okay, but the benefit is that this cable will be a uh, very low error rated, okay? So it can um, immune to the noise, 
right? Not like a, a copper cable, right? Copper cable is uh, uh, not very immune to the noise. So the uh, fiber optical um, cable is very stable, but uh, uh, low error rated, but it's very expensive and uh, hard to repair if some problem happen, right? So these are the some um, cable, cable things um, um, existing. Okay, I see a one question. Jason China and increase the speed even more. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah, thanks for this note, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this is a physical medium and uh, uh, other things are the wireless medium, right? So for the signal, uh, if you send uh, in wireless, then it will be based on the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, right? You don't have any wire, right? You, how you do that is just a radio thing, right? So there is no physical wire, right? It can broadcast to everywhere. And uh, this is uh, what I say, uh, half uh, duplex, right? So what is half duplex mean? That uh, they can be the bi-directional, but uh, each time when you send the data and the, the receiving the data has to be wait until you finish the sending the data. Okay, every time one direction. Um, and uh, um, this can guarantee some uh, quality or the uh, no loss of the data. Okay, and the, the propagator environment could affect the transmission uh, quality or the speed, right? Because sometimes you have some ob objects, it will block the data um, transfer, right? Data send and receive. Right, and the, it, the signal could be interference with each other, right? So I think you may have some feeling if you are uh, in the same room, right? The Wi-Fi signal would be um, much uh, better than uh, if you are in the different room, even the different room just, uh, you know, uh, using a, a wall to block that, then the signal could be much weaker, right? So the radio thing has their, you know, uh, disadvantage, but good thing that we don't need to take a while everywhere, right? So the radio link type, there are different uh, radio links type, uh, uh, link type. There are um, some microwave, right? So there is some microwave. When you, I mean, 20 years ago, right? So if you want to watch the TV and maybe you need to use a microwave to receive the signal, right? So it's a uh, a low speed and sometimes the signal is not stable, right? And the, the, for the wireless Wi-Fi, uh, the speed could be up to 100 megabit per second. And the, the, for the wide range, as I mentioned, cellular uh, wireless network, right? And the, eventually um, um, we will have the 5G, uh, as I mentioned. And also we have the satellite uh, wireless uh, link right? Because sometimes you don't have, for example, if you have a, a hiking, right? Or, or just uh, um, do some um, things in the um, national park, then you will realize there is no signal there, right? But sometimes uh, I know that uh, there's some company provides the satellite signal, right? For your mobile phone. And then almost everywhere you can receive the signal, but the satellite, uh, uh, a service would be much expensive than the, uh, your cell phone service, right? So, uh, but the, the satellite service or satellite radio link uh, usually will have a lower speed than the, uh, the cellular uh, wireless network, okay? And also it will help you to um, just uh, get a signal almost everywhere, but the delay would be, be, be larger, right? So this is the, some trade-off, okay? And uh, next, um, I think uh, we, 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 we generally know what is the internet, what is a protocol, and the network edge, right? Host, access network, and physical medium. And now next, we need to learn something about the, um, the network call, right? The package circuit switching and the internet structure. And then we need to uh, understand the performance of the network right, loss, delay, throughput, based on the bandwidth we, we just defined, okay. Okay, good notes, yeah, from the, um, 
Mikhailo. Oh, sorry if I pronounce name your wrong. Okay, so yeah, he he he's he's noted the microwave, but my house seems to break Wi-Fi connection sometimes. Okay, so that means the radio wireless connection could in, uh, influence with each other, right? That's a good example. Um, yes, thanks for the note. And uh, okay, let's continue for the network call. And as we, this figure show again, right? So as we mentioned, so the national or global internet service provider uh, and the local regional internet uh, service provider provide your uh, internet service, right? And uh, uh, they need to send and uh, 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 receive the, the, the packet, right? So usually the packet switching is a, a network uh, call or important uh, concept uh, in the network call, okay? So it will host a break application layer message into packets, as we mentioned. So when you send the data or send the message application, it will trunk or divide the data into multiple packets, right? And send or forward the data or forward the packets. Okay, in the future, uh, data is too general, right? So the packet is a good thing to use. So we trunk the message or data into the packets and we send or forward the packet from one router to the next router and across different links from the source to the de uh, destination, okay? So each packet is transmitted at the full link capacity. So here are some important things. For example, if you send the packet from the uh, a data center to your local computer, right? Even if each link will be transmitted at a full link capacity. So if I say, what is the overall bandwidth of the link from the uh, beginning to the end, then the bandwidth would be limited by the lowest uh, link's bandwidth, right? Because just, uh, we will show some figure later, but uh, even if you have a very high bandwidth for the previous link from data center to your uh, regional uh, uh, ISP or some, 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 some router, but uh, your own uh, network would be bad, then the bandwidth will be low, right? So there is some um, things we, we, we want to understand how the packet will be sent through the different links and through the different routers here, okay? So here is the um, packet switching, okay, store and forward. So as we mentioned, if you have the uh, transmission rate or bandwidth R, right, and L is the packet uh, number of the bits, and it will take the L divided by R second to transmit or push out L bit packet into a link at R bit per second, right? So this is the uh, bandwidth. Okay, and um, um, we will send the entire packet must uh, arrive at a router before it can be transmitted on the next link. Okay, that means um, packet need to arrive fully or entirely at the router and the, the router send the packet to the next uh, uh, link and uh, next router. So one by one until the packet arrive at the destination. Okay, so any question, Joseph? How does a router know that a packet is complete? Okay, that's a good question. So uh, I think there is some uh, information in the packet and uh, to uh, let the router know that the packet will be received uh, entirely on loss, right? We will mention that later, but if the packet will be lost, the router will be uh, request to receive that packet again. Okay, there is some information in the packet and the router will know that. Okay, so there is some uh, 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 algorithm we will, we, will, we will mention later. Okay. But can, it, can it just use the checksum of the is correct? Uh, I think checksum is one of the, uh, the, 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 the method, right? So if you have the checksum to verify if the packet uh, will be exactly the same as the original packet, right? The, pack, the checksum definitely is a good uh, uh, method to verify if the packet has been received uh, uh, entirely, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think there is some other approach, uh, but checksum definitely is a good approach, okay? But uh, then that's the problem is that if you want to verify the checksum, you have to spend some overhead, right? You have to uh, uh, decode the packet and uh, verify if the checksum is uh, exactly the same as the original checksum, okay? 
Okay, and uh, uh, here, uh, as this is a quick uh, numerical example. So if we have L uh, is equal to 10K bits, R is equal to 100 megabits, right? So it's a one hop transmission delay would be uh, 0 0.1 M second, okay? So this is just a simple uh, uh, calculation, uh, 10K divided by uh, 100 megabytes. Okay, uh, mem sorry, 100 megabits. Okay, 10 k bits divided by 100 megabits, right? We need to, to, to pay attention. In network class, usually we use a bit, but in some other uh, courses, uh, for example, my previous uh, uh, parallel or uh, hyperbolic computing, uh, when we calculate some bandwidth, maybe we will use uh, bytes. Okay, so it depends on the application level or networking level. Networking level, we use, use a bit. Okay. So the end-to-end -end delay is 2L divided by R. So we will assume zero propagation delay, but we will cover more um, details here later. Okay, we will use an example later. So here is a packet switching um, high-level figure, okay, from the A, B uh, beginning to the uh, destination C, D, E, okay? So here you can see the uh, rotor will have a Q, right? different uh, uh, packet will send uh, to the queue and uh, the queue of the packet is waiting for the output link, right? So um, there is some, some concept about packet queue and the loss. So if the arrival rate to link uh, exists a transmission rate of the link for a period of time, the packet will queue there, right? And waiting to be transmitted to an output link. Okay, but uh, sometimes a uh, bad thing would happen if the queue would be out of uh, memory or the buffer is full, right? So that means you cannot just uh, 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 put the packet into that queue, right? The queue is full, right? You don't have a uh, memory, right? You don't have uh, enough space to store that packet. That means some uh, packet will be lost, right? So this is a good question, I think. Uh, uh, the, the, the Joseph, uh, Joseph uh, just asked, so if the packet just lost, right, and uh, how would uh, a rotor uh, know, right, and how would the rotor um, re not re-access, but just uh, re-grab the data, right, because you don't want to the packet to lose eventually, right, this time you cannot queue, doesn't mean that eventually you cannot uh, queue the packet and send the packet, so there is some scheme that we want to make sure that the loss would be as low as possible, but sometimes um, the scheme would uh, not working, right, will not be working, then eventually some packet would be lost, right, so the packet loss case is not, um, um, Rare case, sometimes it happened. Okay. So there are questions. So to decrease delay, R has to have a higher bandwidth. Uh, general speaking, yes. Based on the formula L divided by R, right? So if you want to uh, reduce the delay, uh, you can have the high bandwidth. But also it depends on the um, the, the 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 packet size, right? And we will uh, finally. Um, um, uh, give you a formula. So this is only the Q delay, but the overall delay would be consist of Q delay and the, what other delay, and you transmit the data, right? That delay and all the data go through the link, that delay, right? So we will give you a formula of the overall delay. But generally speaking, if you have a higher bandwidth, definitely you will have a low delay, right? Okay, and uh, here are the two key uh, network call functions. And the one function is for forwarding. So the forwarding function is that uh, it is a local action, okay? So it moves the arriving package from rotor's input link to appropriate rotor's output link, right? The rotor receive a packet, and then it needs to forward the packet to the uh, next, uh, 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 next link, right? So that means, uh, it has to understand how you forward this packet, right? So there is some routing algorithm here, right? So from the, um, the, the, the receiving the data and then forward the data to the next uh, uh, destination. Okay, so there is some forwarding algorithm here, but this is the local um, action to a rotor. 
and also there is a global action to the whole um, network. So this is um, um, the routing action. Okay, so this is the global action. So it will determine source and destination path taken by the packets. So at the beginning, you will determine, right, from uh, one to uh, 10, right? And uh, the routing algorithm will give you the idea how you route the data. But the forwarding uh, algorithm is uh, local to the router, right? So it will determine how you send the data to the, from the input link to the uh, appropriate uh, uh, router's output link. Okay, so there are two key network call functions here. Okay, regarding the routing algorithm and the routing algorithm, uh, 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 that's uh, some, some another story. Okay, we will, later we will talk about the different uh, algorithm, but uh, um, so you can think about there is a scheme, right, to determine how to find the output link and how to find the uh, destination, okay, for the global. So here are some uh, packet uh, switching thing, uh, circuit switching. So the end-to-end -end resources allocated to reserve call uh, between source and the destination. So in this diagram, so each link will have uh, four circuits, okay? So you can see that the rotor, um, you can see the, uh, the laser here, right? So you can see the first, this is a rotor, and this is another rotor. This is a link, right? And uh, this rotor, um, each link will have a four circuit here, right? You can see in this link, uh, we open the second circuit, right, in the top. And uh, for this link, we open the first uh, circuit in the right, right? And uh, for the circuit switching, uh, each circuit will be uh, the dedicated resources, right? So if the circuit is open, that means uh, no other, um, uh, uh, no other resource would use this link, right? This link would be dedicated to this send and receive, okay? So this is um, um, something uh, you uh, commonly use in traditional uh, telephone networks, right? So for the different router or different links, they open and uh, switch a dedicated circuit. And uh, if the dedicated circuit is established and this line will be used uh, for the communication. For example, if you call someone, right? And uh, before you can talk to someone, you have to establish a link, right? So you can think about, uh, I call uh, Tom and uh, we have a lot of links between us, right? And uh, if we dial his number and then the link has to be established before we can talk to each other. So during the established uh, uh, processing uh, 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 time, uh, the circuit will be um, dedicated to our communication, okay? So this link will not be used by other. So this is a, a, a dedicated resources. It can guarantee the performance, but the bad thing that if you dominate this link, other people cannot use that, right? So um, we have some different uh, uh, ideas how we can share the, uh, the link with other people. So as, uh, as we mentioned previously, so there is some frequency uh, division multiplexing so that we use the same link, but the link will have the different uh, uh, channels, right? For the different uh, frequency, right? And uh, uh, each call uh, allocates its own band and can transmit at the maximum rate of the narrow band, okay? So you can see that we establish the link, but uh, the link has a different frequency. So different uh, uh, type of the message could be transmitted in the same cable. But there is also some uh, um, more intelligent or, or smarter idea is that we can um, fully utilize the uh, bandwidth of this line, right? But uh, we can based on the time division, right? You don't need to dominate the uh, full link uh, always, right? So you can do that based on the different uh, time interval, right? So different people can share the link based on their um, need or demand, right? For example, if I have the four users here, right? We can divide the time into the four partitions, right? And each user just use 25% uh, of the, 
the time, and then the, each user could uh, use the full capacity or bandwidth of the link, right? And and uh, in the future, we can also talk about some statistical TDM, time division multiplexing, because different user and application may use a different uh, uh, time of the link, right? For example, uh, I and Tom uh, both use this link, but uh, I will dominate 18 percentage. My, my, my message or my packet will dominate 80 percentage of the time. Then I don't need to uh, evenly uh, separate this link with Tom, right? I can dominate 80 percentage, but Tom can just use 20 percentage of the time, right? So they are not uh, even the same. So um, so these two methods, uh, circuit switching has the uh, advantage and disadvantage, right? So for, for the first part, you have the, um, the very stable uh, bandwidth, but the bandwidth is only, in this example, is only uh, one fourth of the full capacity, right? Uh, but all the uh, message or packet can be transmitted at the same time, okay? For the second case, you can fully dominate the, uh, the full bandwidth. But uh, um, the, the disadvantage is that um, uh, some users may have more data and the higher priority, right? So you use more time, then this uh, even distribution may not be good. So we propose, or some previous technology proposed the statistical uh, time division multiplicity. Okay, so I think uh, we are run out of time. Sorry about that, one minute. Uh, Later, but uh, um, so this is uh, today's uh, lecture, and uh, next time we just want to finish the network core part. If you have time, just uh, look at slides before the lecture, and uh, uh, we can also do an office hour. So uh, I have already sent the office hour uh, links to everyone. So uh, there is a one link, a Zoom link for me, and one Zoom link for my uh, TA. So uh, please uh, join the office hour and uh, uh, ask a question, okay? Yeah, so here is today's lecture. Any question? Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for attending that and uh, see you next week and uh, hopefully you enjoy your weekend, okay? Um, I thank just you. had a quick question. For frequency okay. division multiplexing um, in say like copper cable, does that just involve you combine all the frequencies and then you run it through like a notch filter or something to separate out the frequency that you want? Mm -hmm. it, okay. Yes, that's right. Yes, because you just uh, uh, mix all the frequency into uh, the, the signal, right? And then you have something to decode the signal into the different uh, data when you use Okay. It. And even though they're all mixed together on the cable, the, it's still preserved when you run it yes, through yes. a filter. Okay, cool. Yeah, usually it will be uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, frequency data, right? So it can be uh, decoded like this way. Okay. And, and so you could theoretically divide it up into as narrow of frequency bands as you want, but there's some standard for like how wide those channels are? Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else that's due over the weekend or for Monday? Uh, I don't think so. I think this is the first week. I don't want to everyone to be very intense in the first week. Just start doing some 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 assignment. Um, I I would like to post some assignment uh, uh, next week uh, or maybe after the uh, long weekend, right? I, uh, but uh, uh, the. I think this is due for every day. If you can look at the slides, uh, we uh, taught and we talk about uh, for each lecture and uh, maybe just uh, review the slides for next lecture, that would be great. Yeah. Sounds good, thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, Joseph. Okay, so if no questions, that's it for today. Thank you, everyone. Okay, see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.